Beans in the house. What else did you learn about the gut, uh, the gut biome? In, in prepping for this What's book. neat is now we have these interventional trials. So we've always known you, uh, you can, uh, so flashback a few years ago, it was a black hole, almost no pun intended, where, because most gut bugs are actually unculturable in laboratory conditions. Like we can't grow them outside of the human colon. We don't know what the gas, we don't mm -hmm. know. And so it, we had, it was black bug. We had no idea what was going on there until we had genetic fingerprinting techniques. And all of a sudden for the first time, we'd be like, oh, okay. We can actually track people's microbiome over time, compare people's different microbiomes, and we can correlate diseases with, um, uh, with different uh, bugs in our gut and change people's diets, change the microbiome, see the beneficial or adverse effects. But... That's the problem. If you improve someone's diet, all of a sudden you give people lots of whole grains and legumes, uh, beans, split peas, chickpeas, and lentils, lots of prebiotics. They get these beneficial changes in their microbiome, and all of a sudden they have amazing health benefits. Uh, yeah, but you just fed them a whole bunch of healthy food. How do we know microbiome has anything to do with it? That's where fecal transplants come along, uh -huh. right? Then we can prove it's the microbiome because we can take those gut bugs and put it into somebody who's continuously the crappy diet, and see if we can get those same metabolic benefits. And that's what we're seeing. So we're seeing, um, yeah, so, you know, someone gets a fecal transplant from someone who's overweight, all of a sudden they start packing on pounds eating the same food. Um, or there's- That's crazy. Mental health changes, um, all sorts of crazy things. Um, and, and then we can prove it's the gut bug. Now, what happens is, of course, it's temporary because, right, you, you infuse the gut bugs, yeah, but then you keep starving them by not eating any fiber, and then they die away. But you see, initially, those same benefits. Of course, you got to feed those gut bugs or they're going to mm -hmm. die off. But, but so, so what went from a, from a correlation science, now we have a causation science. Um, and it's just fascinating that we can transfer the benefits of a healthy diet. So, so, so I mean, so the the black market rich roll stool, you could, I mean, you know, the 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 the, right. the I mean, yeah, start selling that shit. I, I, exactly. <laughs> right? I mean, who wouldn't pay? It is it is fascinating. I mean, the links to cravings as well, like oh, the, yeah. the nature Amazing. of the gut flora impacts the foods that you Immunity, crave. Uh, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. and. It, it also, I think, is is because it's so complex that it's rife for confusion and people kind of making claims about what you should and you shouldn't do that we don't necessarily have the ability to really back up at this point. It, particularly this kind of personalized nutrition. Like people all the time are sending me things. My, I, I sent my stool sample in to this company and gave me back a thing and said, I should be eating this and I shouldn't be eating this. We don't have that the kind of granularity. That it does not. Same thing with the DNA testing, mm -hmm. right? People, they get back their, their genome and say, oh, well, I, you know, I'm whatever. I shouldn't be eating the X, Y, and Z. We don't have that kind of. Um, uh, but is it true we should be eating fermented foods and we should be eating, you know, nutritionally a variety of nutritionally dense foods to be kind of seeding that that gut flora with a diversity of 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 bacteria? So it's the three, right? So it's prebiotics, probiotics, and polyphenols, uh -huh. which are these kind of tend to be brightly colored pigments in fruits and vegetables. These are kind of the three uh, the three things that, that benefit a good mi a microbiome, and you can use all three of them or just two of them. I mean, the problem with probiotics is you take them and then they just die off. You don't continue to eat healthy. And so if you just have like antibiotic associated diarrhea or something, you, you wipe out your gut, uh -huh. gut bugs, then I see a therapeutic role of something like probiotics. But otherwise, taking probiotics is useless because they'll just die off. If you put them in the same environment that didn't grow good gut bugs in the first place, putting in some good acidophilus, they're just going to die off because you're not feeding the acidophilus because good gut bugs are by definition fiber feeders, resistant starch eaters. These are, I mean, that's that's, that, that's what makes good gut bugs grow. Um, and so what we really need is we just need to feed our good gut bugs prebiotics. And people are like, oh, I eat so many fruits and vegetables. But you must realize fruits and vegetables are almost all water. Like, you know, uh, fruits are like 80% water. Or some water-rich vegetables, 90 95% water. They're water in vegetable form. Not actually a lot of fiber. You can actually have a pretty deficient fiber deficient diet if you're not including whole grains and legumes, some of these drier mm. um, uh, foods um, into your daily diet. Wow. Um, 
That's good to know. I because I just thought, well, as long as I'm eating a lot of high fiber foods, right. like I'm I'm basically taking care of my prebiotic needs. All right, but there, it's actually not. So the fruits and vegetables are not high. I mean, they're high fiber foods compared to what ninety nine percent of the population needs. But um, if you're really trying to build, you know, seventy grams a day, uh, you know, eighty grams a day, or like one hundred and twenty grams, which is how we probably evolved, you know, based on human coprolites, you know, fossilized feces. Um, then, I mean, if you, and you do the math, you, people don't even close. So, you know, Ornish, you know, really healthy, you know, uh, um, whole food plant-based diet, you got it like 60, um, mm-hmm. which is, you know, average is about 15, uh, recommended minimum is about 30. And so getting 60, but I mean, that's, I mean, that's a remarkably healthy diet to shoot up there. And then these population studies where they have no, essentially no heart disease, no diabetes, no breast cancer, no, you know, like sub-Saharan Africa, um, um, uh, half century ago, <laughs> they were getting, you know, the, the triple digit fiber, uh, consumption right. every day. And p- so part of that benefit may actually have been the microbiome. Um, uh, and that, that was the benefit of the, of the fiber as opposed to, uh, you know, uh, drop a one's cholesterol or something. Right. More will be revealed though. I think there's, there, there's, there's gotta be like lots of crazy studies being performed right now. Oh, the, fascinating. Uh, no. And so there, there are vegan fecal transplant studies. What can yeah. we, will you give someone a, you know, you know, uh, you know, they do it through tubes, they uh-huh. do it through capsules. I, you know, you just don't want to burp after that, you know, that kind of thing. Do you know, but, uh, Robin Shutkan, Dr. Robin Shutkan, mm-hmm. um, she's a DC, uh, DC um, physician who specializes in in the microbiome, and she cool. was she was on the show a long time ago. But she was predicting not only fecal transplants becoming like a booming business, but actual spas, like high end spas, where you could go and and have your and you know pick, your pick artisanal your... <laughs> fecal transplants. Right, right. You what know. you want them to eat for the week before you show yeah, up? Exactly. Right, right. I want that. Right. That's uh, right. 